Hello out there, all you cool, epic, awesome listeners and fans. Welcome. You're now listening to episode 20 of the Cool Epic Awesome podcast. I'm your co-host, Matt. I'm your other co-host, Joe. And today we're discussing three films, um, one of which being Shazam 2, which was a huge flop in the box office, but we'll get to it. Um, We also saw John Wick 4 which was amazing. Yeah. I think we both agree on that. And then last week I recommended a very strange movie called Meet the Feebles, which I'm excited to talk about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's get straight into it. I guess we'll yeah. start off with Shazam. Yeah. I know you said you want to start with Shazam. Um, what did you think of like this, this story, this, the second one's story overall compared to the first one? I... I wasn't a big fan of the first Shazam. Um, I thought this one was a stronger film overall. I think it had a better story, and yeah. I liked it. I mean, I like I don't have any problems with the story. It's just the f- the film itself sort of feels like 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 if it would have came out in like two thousand eight or something, like people would have loved it. But yeah, it's just this idea of like superhero fatigue, and at this point, like it's just so overdone. To yeah. do like a basic story that people aren't interested, in, clearly. Yeah. As this is like one of the biggest flops of flops ever, honestly. Of, of recent memory, at least. Which yeah. sucks for WB because they already like don't have any money. Yeah. Um, but they also like they didn't market it like at all. Yeah, even James Gunn, like he didn't really go out of his way to promote yeah. it. You like, can tell like they weren't. They like they from the beginning like they knew this was like a sinking ship. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny with these though because I feel like the weakest part of the movie is Shazam, Shazam himself. Yeah, it is. He's just like really annoying as a character. Yeah. And like I, I feel like in the first one, it was okay for him to be like that immature, like stupid. Because he's what is he fifteen in the first one, right? Yeah, something like that. So like. He acts like that when he's Billy. But now in this, he's 18. He's, like, way more mature. So, like, every time um, Asher Angel's on screen, like, he's, like, a way more, like, mature... I mean, he's still a kid, but he's, like, mature. And then Zachary Levi comes on as Shazam, and he acts like he's, like, a 12-year-old. Yeah. It I feel is like it's, of... they're playing, like, two different, like, characters, almost. Yeah, the, the disparity between uh, Asher Angel and Zachary Levi's performance is pretty pretty stark but yeah. um yeah i don't i just i don't know I, it's hard to even say anything about this movie to me it was just like comp- like complete basic by the books superhero film yeah which, was which just, honestly is, is okay like i don't i'm like it i mean it, it, if it came out in 2008 it probably would have made like 200 million dollars but like for this like the movie overall is fine yeah i didn't hate it you know um, I don't, I don't. What do you think of? Do you think Shazam's gonna stick around or? No, they're all they're all gonna. Honestly, I I saw people online like saying this, and I I honestly would be for it too. But I don't know how like people overall would feel about it. Is that they'd use that the the Miss Marvel like Mary Broom Broom what's his name? Oh, Mary. Mary's the girl's name, right? Oh, Mary, like Mary Marvel or something. Yeah. Something like that. No, and or, have her be like Shazam moving forward in the, the DCU. Mm, maybe. But Which I honestly, think, like, I like, like, I loved her character way more than Shazam's in the movie. Yeah, she was good. Um, yeah. I just feel like Shazam's whole thing, though, like his his draw is that it's a kid. Who like becomes this, this superhero, and that actress is like already aged up to the point where when she does transform, it's the same actress. They don't. Well, have no, to get, no, like... she would be. She would play like the like transformed version. Oh, and they'd get like a new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, just like a gender swap, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like they're Which honestly like. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I, I don't think they would do it, but like. I feel like Shazam's like a character that like it's not that important of a character. Like not that many many people like there's not many like die hard like Shazam fans that they would be get like a lot of backlash for it. 
Yeah, I agree, and I honestly wouldn't care. I would be fine with that. Yeah. But I feel like like they're not going to – James Gunn no, does not want to touch know. Shazam. Shazam for a while. And, like, Black Adam until – um, until his shit's actually kind of like set up. I actually like Shazam as a character, so I'm kind of like disappointed because now, like, I know I'm not gonna see any Shazam for like at least like seven, five, seven years. Yeah, it because they kind of do set it up where in the post credit scene you have characters from Peacemaker show up, which is like James Gunn's show. Yeah. So they do leave it open in that aspect. But if this movie would have made money, I think there could have been a bigger possibility of Zachary Levi sticking around. Yeah. Just because of like how colossal of a flop it was, I don't see him returning to the role. No. And then he's kind of, he's like going insane. Yeah. On on the he was like, well, there's this, oh, there's this whole other drama with the movie that we'll get into it later. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I wanted to talk about a couple other things in the movie, though. I liked, um, like, how dark some of the tones were in it. And that's mm-hmm. because of David F. Sandberg and his his roots yeah. in horror. I liked, like, the creature design. I thought all those creatures looked cool. Yeah. And the VFX, for the most part, was pretty polished. Which makes sense, because they've been sitting on this movie for a while. For, like, two years, almost. Yeah. And that's because of COVID. It just kept getting pushed back. Yeah. I do like how they really lean into like the the Greek mythology. Like uh, it felt like more, this felt more Greek than like any of the Wonder Woman movies. Yeah, which I don't know if I love. I feel like that should be sort of Wonder Woman's realm. No, I no that that I mean it's I feel like it's more of a testament to how bad Wonder Woman's been. Like uh, Shaz- I mean Shazam is a character based in Greek mythology, so like it makes sense for his like rogues gallery to be like connected to you know. Yeah. But like the same thing with Wonder Woman, but like I feel like they never even tap into any of that with Wonder Woman. Yeah, especially the last movie sucked. The first one was yeah. kind of in that vein, but yeah. This a this a little off topic, but like I I'll it'll, I'll say it quick and then we'll get back. But um I feel like for going forward in the DCU, like they should make one their like vision for Wonder Woman should be like a Kratos type of like character yeah i agree i think that'll be sick like like a like a brutal like warrior like that kills gods like i think that would be sick yeah i think they're uh, they're gonna be well i guess james gunn doesn't really care but i feel like wonder woman kind of has this like sex appeal kind of where they can't make her like too like masculine or i mean like she doesn't have to like i mean she's supposed to be like superhuman she doesn't have to look like no, I, yeah, well, no, I'm I'm saying I, that's like a reason why I don't think they I think they might not do that because they want to keep uh, that like appeal. Yeah, but I would I would enjoy like a like a barbaric ass Wonder Woman. Yeah, murdering yeah. gods and, and shit. Speaking of Wonder Woman, though, she actually shows up in the movie, yeah. and the cameo to me just made like no sense. I don't. Yeah, just that's like just really like that. Weird. That was kind of like a like oh, wave your hand kind of like oh it's, it's like a superhero I, I I had a feeling that was going to happen she just like shows up there's no really explanation to how she yeah. got to where they were yeah. also I, f- I found it weird how it's like obvious that they're using a stunt double in like the 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 first time you see Wonder Woman in his dream I found it weird that they like wouldn't show her face at all I thought that was part of the whole like, because it was the wizard's face after. I thought that was, like, part of the gag of it. Yeah, but you could tell, like, that body was not Gal Gadot's, and it's, like... I I get that for the scene, it didn't matter, because you didn't have to see her face anyway, yeah. but it's just kind of, like, giving flashbacks of, of headless Superman. Yeah. It was cool that they actually did get uh, Gal Gadot to come back and do it, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know how I was she's talking... Gonna be... Wait, well, go ahead. No, you go. I mean, she's apparently she's gonna be in Flash and Aquaman too. Yeah. Um. I. I don't know. I feel like she has a chance of sticking around. I. Don't, I wouldn't mind it. Hers is like a. A, a toss up. I feel like. Yeah. 
But no, I was going to say, you know, I was talking about how, like, the movie's pretty dark kind of, at points. Yeah. Do you remember that one scene where they're on the roof and, like, uh, one of the daughters of Atlas just, like, makes a teacher, like, kill it's himself? So fun, yeah. I thought it, I thought he would be saved, but he literally just jumps off the roof. Yeah. That was pretty dark, I thought. Yeah. Honestly, I um, felt like this one, the first one was darker in my... You think so? Yeah. Like, the villains were way darker. Like, do you remember the... that off, the office scene? Oh, yeah, where, like, the seven deadly sins or whatever. Yeah. Pull up. Yeah. That's... That's that had like the same type of creature design kind of though as the creatures that yeah. pulled up in this. Yeah. But yeah, I think this was better than the first and like in comparison to other recent superhero movies, I think this is way better than fucking Ant Man. Oh yeah. Like it's yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. The the actually like I feel like all this like they really fleshed out like the Marvel family. I kind of feel yeah. like in the first one they were just like. Like, I don't know, kind of like, and Pete, like, you didn't know anything of it, it was just like there. Yeah, but they get, they like just give them their powers at the end. That's but, true. Um, yeah, I don't really, I don't really like the Shazam, Shazam Lee, whatever. Like, yeah. Like the Shazam. Emily. I feel like just I focusing kinda... on Shazam is probably better. Yeah. Because it, it makes his powers like seem less important if like everyone yeah. else has them also. Like, what makes him better yeah. than everyone else? Exactly. And I like, like how... I pref- I... At the, like, I like how they took the powers away from the kids so that it is forced to just be Shazam at the end. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I feel like... Um, um... Oh, wait, I forgot now. What were we talking about? I was saying how I don't really like the Shazam family too much. Yeah, like, I feel like at the end of the first one, like, that should have just been, like, a one-time thing, that they were able to do that. Like, where they all turned and got the powers. Like, I don't, I I would have preferred if they just stuck with Billy having the powers. Yeah, and by the end of this movie, they all get their powers back, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not, not like... Not that it matters anyway, but... They 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 say they can get their powers back, but they didn't like get them back. I don't think. Pardon. Um, how did how did Shazam like survive at the end? I thought he died. He died. They brought him back to life. How? With the the spear. Oh, uh, yeah, that was weird. I thought like, at first, I thought they were killing him off, which is, I was like, okay. This is weird that Zachary Levi is going on talking about how they might make Shazam three and shit. But well, but, honestly, like if even if they killed them all, if they could have made, I was thinking about this when I left. Like what they should have done is like they kill them off, but then like, uh, right? What is Freddie for him and what's the other girl's name? Uh, Mary. No, no, no. The, oh, the like, other um, god. On Thea or some shit. Yeah, like them try to like find Wonder Woman to get her to like bring Shazam back. Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, I feel like yeah, speak- w- I I actually really really liked Rachel Zegler in this. Yeah, she, she was, was my, great. She was my favorite character. Mm-hmm. Um, and although she's she's gonna be big because she's doing Snow White also. Yeah. And and the Hunger Games prequel, which comes out this year. Yeah. She's been in a couple flops though so far. Um, this and uh, West Side wow. Story. Although West yeah. Side Story was was a COVID, yeah. It was during COVID and it was on Disney Plus, but still. And there was also the scandal going on with that dude. Yeah. Um, I thought she was amazing in this though. And honestly, yeah. all the do- I I really liked like all the daughters of Atlas. I thought they were all cool. Yeah, they were all great. Uh, did, can you think of like a favorite scene you had? Because I'm I'm having trouble here. Uh, not really. There's like not a ton. It's not really like. Yeah, there's not like any memorable, like fight sequences or yeah, or anything. I gotta think of something though. I, um, 
I feel like there was one shot I actually liked. But I don't remember what it was. I mean, I did like the ending battle where, like, they're in that bubble and he's fighting the dragon. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, But really, yeah, like, not much memorable scenes. Um, Which goes back into what I was saying about how it's just, like, a basic-ass, like, superhero movie. Yeah. Like, for better or for worse, you know? Um, uh, did you notice uh, David F. Sandberg had a cameo? Yeah. He got, like, carried up. I thought that was funny. I yeah, actually, I, I noticed that, like, right away. And you know his wife did, too? Who, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who his wife is. So. His wife, uh, I think his wife's, like, a, she's she's a producer, I think, too, on a lot of his movies. Um, She, like, you know when he catches the car? Yeah. Oh, and, she was and, in like, the, the whip? Yeah she, yeah, she was the woman screaming. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, for those of you that don't know, though, about David F. Sandberg, we've talked about this in previous episodes, yeah. but he has, like, a really cool story yeah. with how he, like, made it in Hollywood, which is that he just made this short film on YouTube called, like, Lights Out, and it was just, like, I don't know, like, what, a 10-minute video? And people at Warner Brothers, like, saw the video and, and like, asked him to direct a like full feature length version of the short film so he was just like making youtube videos in his house and then randomly he's making huge big budget movies for warner bros yeah which is really cool and it does kind of show you that i guess like anyone could do it if your yeah. work is good enough you know um, and I, I don't know if you saw what um he, they were asking him like what what he thinks he wants to do next and he said he's like he definitely wants to lean do more horror in the future. And honestly, I'm really excited. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these guys get, uh, like, the superhero stuff is taxing. To yeah. Just have to deal with all these expectations and studio requirements and things like that. So, yeah, it, yeah it'll, it'll be cool to see him take a step back and um, work on something smaller. Especially because I do really enjoy, like, his horror elements. Yeah. Did you ever see Lights Out or no? I haven't. I I watched like the short film, but I've never seen like the the actual movie. Yeah, it was all right. Um, you could tell it was like he was a very unpolished as a director, but like it makes sense since he's not like yeah. technically a real director. I know he's he's very active I mean, on social media. I mean, he too. is a, he's a real director. No, no, yeah, I meant like when at that point in his career. Oh, oh. but he, that, was, that was his directorial debut, right? Yeah, yeah. And you could see, like, he's refined a lot of his uh, directing style, yeah. which is good. Um, do you think that this negative box office, though, is going to hurt, like, his career? No. Or not much? No, I don't think so. I feel like it was just, like, a perfect storm of, like... Yeah, no, honestly, like, it, 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 that's exactly what it was. Like, it was, it was a perfect storm. There's just so much bad shit surrounding the movie. Yeah. From the fact that, first of all, Ant Man doing bad didn't help because people were like, okay, like I'm tired of these movies. Yeah. Which so, honestly is crazy that Ant Man made. How much is Ant Man? Probably what, like $500 million? Yeah, somewhere around that. Maybe and a little less. In terms of quality, like Shazam like blows Ant Man out of the water. Yeah. Like. How much did it make? It made like did it make like forty mil or something? I just saw it like today. It, it crossed a hundred million. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. Yeah, it it might. It's probably gonna break even. That's it. Like at best, probably. Yeah, but I wanted to talk about some of like the behind the scenes drama. I was like getting into it a little bit. Yeah, but once the movie came out and like the projections were there of how how like shit it was gonna do. Warner Brothers like put out this this like article basically shit talking Dwayne the Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, my favorite, um, yeah. saying how he wouldn't allow for Black Adam characters to show Appear. up in in the Shazam post credit scene, and same like he wouldn't let Shazam show up in a Black Adam post credit scene. Yeah, which is, I guess they were trying to like use that as a scapegoat as to why the movie was doing yeah, bad. Yeah, no, but that, that's though, definitely like, not. Yeah, like, 
that wouldn't have saved this movie at all. But yeah, not at all. However, like it's disappointing because that would have I would have been I would have liked that a lot more than the post credit scene we got. And it sucks too. I feel like, I feel bad for like because it was supposed to be Hawkman and what's the other girl's name? Like Calypso or something? Cyclone. So yeah, um, like they're like two like. Like upper coming actors and actresses, and like imagine like you're trying to like get more roles and stuff, and you like you get vetoed out. Yeah, it is kind of fucked up, but I don't know. I, I don't know like who to trust because The Rock seems just like a nice guy, but like nah, you know, I could see him reports, being like, a, like I could see him being th- like like in terms like strong arming shit in. Yeah, and then Zachary Levi like ended up reposting the article on his Instagram. It was like, "Oh, the truth will set you free" or something. Yeah. So it's just like a, it's like a circus over there. They gotta like yeah. get their fucking talent under control. And I, I mean, I, I mean, it's not like, like bro, and, and I mean, this isn't James Gunn. Like this, they're done. This is it. Like they're not. And you think any of those people are gonna be attached to DC Project anymore? I doubt it. Yeah. Definitely not The Rock. But you saw James Gunn like got himself caught in a lie the other day, with uh, what's it called? Ben Affleck. With, like with Ben Affleck, yeah. Yeah, I saw it too. Really weird stuff. How he said on yeah. Twitter like, "Oh, me and Ben talked. He's really excited to do something," and then Ben Affleck is like, "Yeah, like I would never make a <laughs> DC movie." So like James Gunn just like blatantly lied. Yeah. Unless unless he was like mistaken by the nature of the conversation, but. Or- so or like I I have no idea. Yeah, it's just it's funny. Well, it's ben gonna... Affleck's lying, but I doubt he's lying. Yeah, he he said I actually saw him lying. He said he has someone attached apparently to to Brave and the Bold. That's pretty cool. But then I have like no idea. Yeah, they honestly I think they should have waited. As much as I loved seeing the slate, they should have probably waited to to like say what they were yeah, doing. Yeah, because a lot of this shit is like really far out. Like the we're not getting anything. Well, actually no. Next year we're get. I mean, next year we're gonna get two things, but they're not even really like the new, like, twenty twenty five. They're gonna we're gonna probably get it's gonna be Superman, uh, the the Authority, and then like the what are the two shows? Uh, what like Creature Commandos or Creature something? Commandos. Well, that's twenty twenty four. Oh, which yeah, oh, I don't like, know. It's such a it's it's just so negatively impacting the box office. I saw that. Yeah. It, it had an eighty percent drop, which yeah. is like insane, considering it barely made a lot of money to begin with. But I think, like I'm telling you, when when like Superman comes out, like they're gonna be, oh, they're gonna brand it like so different, and to be so detached from this like DC, the DC EU. Yeah, I agree. They're gonna I have it. to like it's gonna be like completely different. Yeah. But yeah, um, I don't, I don't, I don't really have much else to say about Shazam yeah. too. One more thing I forgot to say because you mentioned uh, Creature Commandos. I don't know if you saw, yeah. but at the Shazam two premiere, uh, Ron Perlman and then somebody else was there. The dude who plays uh, Crossbones. Yeah, Frank Grillo. They were both at the premiere. Oh, interesting. And so, Frank. Gr- Grillo is supposed to be like attached to something yeah. with the with DC, right? People think that like Ron Perlman is going to be playing like the Frankenstein character in the in the group. That'll be cool. Yeah, because also they said um, James Gunn was saying how live action and animation yeah. will be played by the same actor. Yeah, that'd be and sick. Likes, honestly, a Ron yeah, Perlman he, Frankenstein. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. We got to talk about later. There's uh, Guillermo del Toro's yeah, Frankenstein. Frankenstein yeah, in their cast, but. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I guess we can move on to Rachel Zam. I don't. This, yeah, Is that, they have like, a favorite scene. Like, I, 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 I guess the ending. Yeah. Like I don't. Nothing really notable. Also, yeah. I, I wanna. I also just want to mention that I wasn't able to get to a theater to watch it, so I had to. I had to pirate it, so it wasn't the greatest quality. So that might have altered my opinion on the movie, but I feel like it didn't really, because. It's not like the visuals or anything crazy yeah. that I missed out on seeing. But yeah, it's just like it's inoffensive. It's fun. It's just like a basic superhero flick. I wish there was maybe a little bit more action 
And I wish Shazam wasn't fucking insufferable. But yeah. besides that, I gave it uh, three stars, six out of ten. It's fine. Yeah. I originally gave it uh, seven stars, three and a half out of ten. I mean, three and a half to five. <laughs> but um, I just honestly, like, after thinking about it, like, it really is just the most average like superhero movie. Yeah, like the fact but, that we can't even think of like one yeah, scene we, that we yeah, like. Yeah, I can't think of a scene that like sticks out to me. Like that's pretty bad. Yeah. But, but yeah, we'll see. Well, there's going to be more and more shit about DC each day that comes out. So yeah. All right. Fun. Uh, let's move on to John Wick 4, which came out this past Friday. And let me think. Let me see if I can give a synopsis of this. Now, you watched John Wick 3 recently, right? Yeah, I've watched, yeah, I watched like all the John Wicks like within a week. A week. Um, so where we left off at the end of 3, I forget. Um, he, uh, but now I gotta remember 3. Because I know 2 ends with, with him like killing someone in the Continental. So oh yeah, all... so he has the bounty on his head. Yeah. And then three um, is just everyone trying to violate him. But I forget what happens that leads into four. What happens in... I mean, it's, it doesn't matter, but... Oh, I think... In, oh, I forgot. I think, I think in... Oh, in three, like... I know uh, he gets shot the, and, like... The table, come, the table comes after him. But they also, like... They go after, like, the New York Continental and, like, uh, that yeah, other and that's, dude. That's kind of, like, where we start in this but yeah for those of you who know nothing about John Wick it's basically the first one starts with there's this assassin he's like a retired assassin and someone ends up robbing his crib and they kill his dog so then after that he like comes out of retirement and just like is the most OP like insane assassin there's a little more context to it yeah, yeah. Like, there's this whole society of like assassins and shit, and like. Well, no, not even that. The his wife got him the dog, and his wife like recently passed away from like cancer. Yeah, so she's like so it so it hits those emotional notes. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like super campy, over the top action, and John Wick Four I think was my favorite one in the whole series. Oh yeah, it was. I fucking loved it, dude. And yeah. it was like almost three hours long. And it didn't really feel like it at all. No. The action scenes are just so like insane. I've, yeah, I, I don't, I've never seen, I still think, I think it's the greatest action movie ever made, honestly. I can't think of any other movie that had like the fight, type of fight scenes this movie's had. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's definitely up there, at least for me. It's definitely yeah. one of my favorite action movies. I just, I love John Wick. I, like, we were talking about, remember we were talking about The Mandalorian? Yeah. It's kind of random. But I was like, oh, I want, like, Mando to be just, like, this badass, like, that just violates everyone and, like, doesn't. Yeah. This That's, like, what I was talking about. Like, John Wick yeah. is that. Like, he's just, it's literally, he kills, like, 150 men and doesn't even get shot once. Like, yeah. He's just, like, a beast. And yeah. they, like, don't weaken him at all, really. I yeah. mean, obviously, you have that ending, which I didn't expect, but we'll talk about that after. Yeah. But, yeah, I just, I love Wick. Yeah. Just, I He's just such, him. like, a lovable fucking character. Yeah. I, I um, love, one thing I love about the series, too, is how they incorporate, like, the dogs into it. I think that's such, like, a cool, like, unique thing about it. It's a small detail. Yeah. And especially no, in the, I love the when they use the, the dogs in the fight scenes. Like, I think that's so awesome. Yeah. I, I like that also from like another reason why I like all the fight scenes is just like thinking about it from like a behind the scenes aspect. Yeah. Like how they have to choreograph all these people and it's like so hard to pull off. Yeah. But it just comes out so fire, especially when they tend to not use a lot of cuts. Yeah. Like that there's that one scene, like in the in that they're in a house but the camera's like above them. It's like it's like moving up, like it's following him around. It's like one continuous shot. Yeah, I was gonna. That's my favorite scene. Yeah. Um, that was I was so impressed by that because you have a shot that's going on for like, like two or three minutes straight with no yeah. cuts, 
and there's so much shit happening. There's so yeah. much. There's like it, stuff it, honestly, it's like like it reminded me of. I mean, it's I know it's a completely different shot, but like you know that Babylon shot, like in the beginning, that's like that's two minutes long, and it's like the entire party. Yeah. It reminds me of that kind of. Yeah, it's a similar kind of thing, mm-hmm. but it's just like it's so impressive because like of the stunt work that they have yeah. to do and like all the shit that's getting destroyed and like yeah. if they mess up they have to restart the entire scene yeah um even yeah, the, like, the the fight scene in the roundabout yeah with the cars that was insane yeah I, I remember like i was like there's no way they're gonna top that and then the fucking they had that scene in the house yeah i like how it just like it goes like balls to the wall, just like doesn't yeah. give a fuck, just straight action. Yeah, which is like that's really why you're there, you know. Yeah, like I don't. But honestly, the the plots aren't even that bad. Like they're pretty good. Yeah, like yeah. for an like there's way worse like action plots. It does get a little bit confusing with like understanding like the table yeah. and shit, especially since I haven't seen the first three movies in a while. Yeah, but yeah, I agree. I think the plots are pretty solid. Um. And I was gonna say like all the side characters in this were great. Yeah, I loved I loved Donnie Yen. That's yeah, uh, Donnie Yen was sick. Jane. He was my uh, favorite character. Like besides John Wick, saying Wick is like too basic. But um, Mister yeah. Nobody was cool. Yeah, he was cool. I I liked how they like you said they incorporated like his dog and shit. Yeah. And I like how he uh he's like after Mister Wick, but like. They they sort of like trade like saving each other yeah. at points, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Or no, John Wick like saves his dog. Yeah, like the, he's not like a bad. They're not like bad people. They're just you know. Yeah. One thing though that I wanted to bring up, which is like one of the worst things about the the these movies, is like Keanu Reeves actually fucking like he's not a good actor at all. His line delivery is like insane. How bad it is in this movie. I don't know if you. I just feel like I, I'm so distracted by the action and shit. Like I don't care. Like he's fine. Like I, you know. Yeah, that's why he's a man of a few words. Yeah. Like the most, the longest line he has in the movie is probably like fucking a sense. But just like the way he he like delivers these lines is so funny to me, and it does like bring me out of the movie a little bit. But also like. Because of how campy it is, it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah. Um. What was I gonna say? How How old is he? Uh he's got to be pushing fifty, probably. Yeah. I would say. That's nuts. If he does all the stunts and shit, he says ninety ninety percent of the stunts he does. Yeah, it's pretty sick, and I know he did like um, training with like with weapons. Like actual weapons, which is kind of cool because yeah. it has like the authenticity factor. Yeah. Like you want to be able to believe that this guy knows how to use a gun, and you could tell yeah. by like his movements and shit that he he does. Um, but yeah, like like from the first action scene that started, I was just like smiling like the entire movie. Just yeah, this shit is like the action scenes are so fucking good, and that's really why you're there. Yeah. So now I want to talk about uh, the big, the big ending that's controversial, yeah. which is that John Wick. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Um, John Wick gets killed, which is pretty insane. Yeah. I did not expect them to kill him off, especially when you have like a cash cow like that. Yeah. I think I was reading something that that when the the direct it took like a lot for the studio to allow the director yeah. to do that, but it kind of makes sense with the narrative. Yeah. Like, wh- like what else is he gonna do at this point? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like he he would be free anyway. Like no one's gonna care about that. Either. Yeah, and it was you know weird because I mean? like, they when they said they were doing John Wick four, they initially said they were gonna do four and five, and they were gonna film back to back. So they must have originally had a plan for five, yeah. but then they decided to pivot and kill off Mr. Wick, yeah. which is pretty fucked up. I can't believe they actually killed him. I mean, but now, I, like, I didn't, you know, they're, like, doing, like, spinoffs and stuff. I didn't know this. 
Yeah, I know they're doing a series with Anna de Armas. Yeah. Or not or maybe a movie. I don't know. Well ballerina. Called? Yeah, and apparently uh Keanu Reeves is supposed to appear, so maybe it's yeah. take I mean, I guess it must take place like in the past or something. Yeah. I think if they really wanted to, they could explore more of like John Wick's past universe, stuff. Yeah. This is, like just the universe in general. But yeah, because I like, make like yeah. Did you say for the post credit scene? I didn't know there was. Um, so the post credit scene is basically Donnie Yen's character, like Kane, and he has flowers, mm-hmm. and he's like walking over to his daughter. So because since he's free, he's about to like become closer to her again because she'll be yeah. safe now. And as he's going, there's like a hooded figure that like approaches, is like walking towards him, and you see them like flash a knife, and it's it's the girl whose dad died. Um, oh, because oh. he because uh, Kane like killed her her father. Yeah. So then it like cuts right when you see her face. So I guess it's implying that they're gonna do more with those characters. Yeah. Which would be cool. I would I would love I would follow a Donnie and led. Yeah, uh, John Wick movie. I feel like that would yeah. be interesting. Did you ever see Ip Man or no? No, but like I looked it up now because I saw he was in it. Like I saw, like isn't that what his like his his famous like? Yeah, yeah. What and is those that about? At, it's just like this karate instructor that uh, I don't know. I forget. It's he's it's just like a, a a classic like kung fu. Yeah. But like the action is so over the top, it's really funny. Uh, but yeah, he's great in those. And I, I was I was hyped when I figured, when I found out they cast him in this. Uh, what, I had another question though. What did you think about um, how like their suits could just like block bullets? I liked did it. You th- I like I don't like I don't I, it. It would the it wouldn't make any sense if it couldn't. Like he would just die. Yeah. No, that's the thing. Like, I I wanted to I want to be like, yo, that makes no fucking sense, and it's not realistic. But at the same time, like, if that wasn't the case, it would just make the action scenes like way worse because yeah. there would have to be like less firing and shit. Yeah. And now you have like opportunities to have people in gunfights like right next to each other. Yeah, and it makes for like really cool and unique fights. Yeah. Um, I forgot. Did they set that up in one of the earlier movies? I think so. Right. Well, how they have like the bulletproof. It's like the Kevlar. What do they say? Yeah, I think uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character is the one yeah. who like, provides it. Right. He yeah. was. He was cool in this too. He had like a very Beautiful. short. Yeah. Yeah. But he was cool. Um. I don't know. Like I, I, I said, my favorite scene was that uh overhead action scene. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that stood out. Uh, I liked like how funny like a lot of the fight scenes were, mm-hmm. especially with like the uh, I don't know if body humor is the right is the right word to explain it to describe it. What do you mean? But like when you have people like getting hit by cars and shit, and like oh slapstick, how like slapstick it is. I really enjoyed that. Um, like when he like f- when John Wick gets pushed down the stairs and like rolls down the entire. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like so unserious, you know. Yeah. Which but it's, it's yeah, cool. it's like the I, I enjoy the, that like. There's like some campiness to it that I enjoy. Yeah, for sure. Um, what did you think about about Skarsgård, the villain? Um, honestly, I thought he was kind of underused. I mean, I thought he was good, but I found it weird how he, like, didn't the fight at fighting. all. Yeah, I was going to say that. And I was, like, I know he, he chose Kane to, like, fight for him, which was just, like, kind of dumb. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so he kind of just, like, ends up getting shot in the face at the end. Yeah. But it's not, like, it didn't, like, hold that much emotional weight to me. Yeah. Because, like, I just, like, didn't care. Um. Yeah, he was good. Like I said, all the all the supporting cast was good. Did you have a favorite character, or was it just Wick? I mean, like, I mean, like, I like the uh, the guy who was like the manager of the Osaka Continental. Oh yeah, yeah, he's cool. He's cool. And I know you that, mentioned that whole uh, like setting was sick. 
Oh, like the Japanese shit? Yeah. yeah. That was cool. I know you mentioned that the guys who made this are doing the Ghost of Tsushima movie, right? Yeah. And if yeah, if that's actually getting me hyped for like those sword fighting scenes that they're going to do in that. Yeah. And even just I mean, like the the aesthetic like that was set up in this. Yeah. You could tell like the the guys like know what they're doing and yeah. hopefully one thing one thing he said uh I cuz they interviewed him about it he said like uh he definitely wants to add like more color to the I guess like for, I don't know the setting I what for Ghost of Tsushima? Yeah. Yeah, it is like a relatively dark game. Um, Cuz he said like, he said like you could like in in John Wick is very like there's a lot of like vibrant like unique you know what I mean, man? I don't know. I don't know how to like describe his like style of. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Is there a word for that? Um. Yes, but I can't think of it. It'll come to me. Yeah. But yeah, just how like everything pops on screen. It's super like. I don't know, like in bright lights and shit. There's definitely a word for it, which I'm blanking on, but. Yeah, it's a, that that's that's a seeming interesting. There's a couple like video game adaptations that are coming out. A lot of uh, Sony stuff. Sony stuff, yeah. Because I think so. No, no, I was gonna say Sony makes the John Wick movies, but it was Lionsgate. Yeah. Which is, this is like their their big franchise. Yeah. Are you I gonna watch like... the uh, the ballerina thing? Yeah. Yeah, I was like unsure, but seeing this. Yeah, I'm like, definitely I... gonna watch it now. I need the action. Yeah. One thing that I was thinking of after watching this, though, is like how weird of a circumstance like this movie is. Like, what other franchise can you think of that like the fourth movie is the best? Uh, that's kind of like unheard of. I'm trying to think of like. I thought of like the Avengers, maybe because it's Endgame, but that's not even the best in my opinion. Yeah. But it's very like it's like a weird circumstance because usually you see these these films start to like deteriorate. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like like what are what are like franchises that have four installments? Yeah, even that in general. Like Scream has a good fourth movie. Um, it's not the best in the franchise, but then you have like you know Friday Thirteenth, all the like Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. But those usually went to shit after yeah. like the first two. Um, but yeah, it's really cool uh, how, like, they never let up. They just kept improving. Yeah. Uh, I am cool. tight that Wick is now dead, though. I can't lie. I feel like it, it, it made sense for the story. Like, it's time for his... Yeah, but that means we're not getting any more Wick. Which is sad yeah, to see. Yeah. It seems like they are setting up, though, uh, Donnie Yen's character. And mm-hmm. the daughter of that guy. So yeah. Maybe they'll, they'll do some spinoff with them, or something. They're doing like a a show on Paramount too that's gonna come out this year. What for in the in that universe? Yeah, it's cool. It's it's called the Continental. It's, it takes place in the seventies, I think. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's gonna like be a like lot, a... there's a lot of backstory to explore. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say though, if they want to continue like using John Wick, he like his story is that he was an assassin then he retired and then like the first movie starts with him coming back yeah so you could like tell those stories of like before he retired initially as like an excuse to get keanu back yeah that's like if they need bread if they need to make money then they'll do some shit like that yeah how uh, did you have like a favorite scene probably that like that fight scene we were talking about before yeah Scene is so sick, especially with like the dragon breath rounds and shit. Yeah, and it felt like a video game. Yeah, no, exactly. Another thing I was gonna mention is, uh, and I wrote about this a little bit in the in my letterbox review. It was like, it really like makes you appreciate having like a nice, like fire, just action set piece with like yeah. no CGI. It's just like action, like hand to hand. Yeah, I don't want to say realistic. But I'll say grounded. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, grounded, yeah. It feels like so much cooler than a big like CGI mess. Yeah. That like something like Ant Man had, you know? 
But, I'm trying to think like there's really not that many like good hand to hand fight scenes in the I mean, it's really just Shang Chi and probably the Winter Soldier. Yeah, there's not a lot. Um I wish like the guy who made this would do Blade. That would be sick. Cause like a Blade movie with this like style of action would be so cool. That would be really cool, honestly. Um, has he, has he ever been like attached to any superhero stuff? Um, I want to say he did Deadpool, but I think that's the that's another guy. So I think I'm wrong. What's his name? Chad something. Still still Lexi or some shit. Let me check. Uh. Chad Stahelski. He's doing a Rainbow Six movie with Michael oh, yeah. Jordan. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he doesn't have that many movies. He just has like the Wicks and like. Yeah. That's really it. He's like a stunt. I think he's like a stunt coordinator for a ton of movies. That's yeah, that's cool. And you could tell he understands like the action and how it should work. Yeah. He was on but... Spider Man Two, Deadpool Two, Iron Man Two. The Matrix is 300. Yeah. The Constantine. Um, Damn, he's much, he has a lot of them. Yeah. This ended up being my favorite movie of the year so far, though. Yeah. For I sure. Mm-hmm. My first four and a half star. So, yeah, I, I gave it a nine out of ten. I was even considering, like, giving this a five star. Yeah, honestly. it was pretty, it was close. Because, like, I don't know what better they could have really done. Yeah. Uh, What... Well, let me think the, of uh. Remember that in the middle, there's like that, like huge guy in the purple suit. Yeah, I feel like that's like how Kingpin should look, like that body type. Yeah, that people were making. I saw a thing online. It's like we got Daredevil and uh, Kingpin and John Wick. Yeah, because the blind guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought his suit looked like a little too like campy. Yeah. But it made sense for like this this story. Like I I prefer it to be like look a little different in the MCU. But like generally that style, that like aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, just like how he looks in the suit, like yeah. how fucking large he is. But I think they're just gonna like have Vincent D'Onofrio just like in a normal suit and just use camera tricks to make him look yeah. bigger, which is fine. But yeah, it's a long movie, yeah. but definitely worth it. I'm trying to think if I have any more thoughts on this. I feel like I might. It's really just action, action, action from the start. Yeah. And if you're not into that, then there's no point of watching this because you're going to get bored. Also, yeah. I, I don't think any of the action was repetitive. A lot of it felt like more tense or intense than the previous movies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you felt that. I feel like in 3... A lot of the action got like stale at points just because of how repetitive it was. Yeah. I like how he like uses the environment to his advantage. Uh like when he slices the dude's neck with the playing card. Yeah. Um there's a bunch of other times where he like has to salvage some shit in order to yeah. kill people. He uses his environment and shit. Yeah. But Yeah. R- rip wick. That's all yeah. I gotta say. I don't know if you have any any more thoughts before we move on. No. All right. So, yeah, John Wick 4. What'd you give it? Uh, four and a half. Yeah. I yeah. I think, like, in time, when I revisit this, this could go up to a five. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad I got to see it in a the theater, though. Because... My experience, I watched like the first three movies like in my living room. Yeah. Didn't hit the same. But it's definitely meant for a theater. Yeah. But yeah, John Wick, that's that's my uh, favorite of the year so far, like I said. And it might be beat though in these coming months. We'll see. Yeah. Because we got, we got Bo is Afraid coming. Also, I forgot to mention that. One thing I'm interested to see now is like. Um, because I'm not really like, big into like action movies, and another big action franchise coming out in July is uh, Mission Impossible. And yeah, I've people never love watched... those movies. Yeah, yeah. There's that's like similar. Like, like people love the John Wick movies. Like, I never watched them. Same thing with Mission Impossible. So I wonder like how I'm gonna like 
those movies going forward. I think you might. I mean, I, I, I see like the more. stunts are insane. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't, like, like, uh, like take what's his name? Uh, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Uh, Tom Cruise like flying off fucking mountains. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to get into those actually. Yeah. I'm planning on watching the first one like soon. So. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, we're getting off topic here. But yeah, that re- that basically wa- uh, wraps up John Wick. Yeah. Really awesome action movie. Pure, like, yeah. testosterone and, yeah. and awesomeness. Um, yeah. But yeah, we can move on. I wanted to quickly talk about the Oscars, which happened, like, right after we recorded our last episode. So it's been, like, two weeks. But... Everything everywhere basically hit a hit a clean sweep for the yeah. most part, which, which I'm not about. That and All Quiet on the Western Front want a shit ton. Yeah. Which I actually before the Oscars I went back and watched all the Betchers just because I wanted to like have an actual say in the race. Yeah. And be able to like form an opinion. I think Everything Everywhere was the best movie, and I'm glad it won. But there were a couple uh, snubs. The most notable is uh, Angela Bassett not winning yeah. Best Supporting Actress. And nothing against Jamie Lee Curtis because I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. But it wasn't a knock on I don't, her. But it, I mean, I don't see how her role in that movie like is worthy of an Oscar. Yeah. Not even a nomination, let alone winning. You know. Yeah, I was. I feel like she was like barely in the movie. Yeah, and you see, you saw like Angela Bassett was like not clapping for her and shit. Yeah. Which is like kind of fucked up. But like, I get how she's frustrated. Do you think it has yeah. to do with the Academy not wanting to give superhero movies like credit? Yeah. The, one, the most notable one that's won, though, is like when, when Joaquin won for Joker. Yeah. He won Best Actor. Um, what year was that, 2019? Yeah, so I, yeah, I believe so. But that I don't know if we'll see another uh what's it called? Another superhero performance nominated for a minute at least. Unless Craven. Or Morbius too. Yeah. Jared Leto Nob. Or Madam Webb. Mm-hmm. Um let me think. Any other snubs? I guess I'll just... I'm going to go through, like, who won. It's on our Instagram. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. So, yeah, Best Animated Feature, uh, Pinocchio won. That was basically shooing. I know you wanted Puss in Boots to win. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't seen Pinocchio, but I'm sure it was... It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. And then Supporting Actor, Kihoi Kwan won, which... That was basically a a lock. Yeah. And everyone kind of agreed that he deserved it. Yeah. I mean, Barry Keegan and Brendan Gleeson were both great in Banshees, but oh yeah, I don't think anyone like would have predicted elsewise than than what happened. You know, mm-hmm. best supporting actress, like I said, Jamie Lee Curtis. This one was surprising to me. His best score was All Quiet on the Western Front. And Actually, I mean, I haven't I haven't watched it, so I can't really speak for. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, the score is good. It has a good score, but like, how are you gonna choose that over Babylon? Yeah, that fucking score is insane. And the dude has the dude who who did the music for Babylon has done like a bunch of Damien Chazelle's other movies, and he's won. He usually wins every year or every time they make a movie. Yeah, and I just like don't see how All Quiet is even close to that yeah. in terms of the score but it is what it is Babylon continues to get shit on it's gonna be like it's gonna be a fucking well loved movie in, in years from now yeah no for sure um yeah movie, I mean, it definitely has on. its problems but it I mean uh, why yeah. the flop how much did it cost to make I think it cost like maybe a hundred mil how much did it make how much did it like it I think I don't think it made its money back. Let me see the budget. Let's see, let's see. 80 mil budget. 
Uh, it might have made more than that at the box office. Possibly. Oh no, it made 63 mil off an 80 mil budget. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, anyways, moving on. Best original screenplay was Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, makes sense. Well, Really well written movie. Best adapted was Woman Talking, which I saw. It was good. I enjoyed it. I don't really have any complaints about that. This one, I'm also iffy. Best director is The Daniels. Um, like, you know I love everything everywhere. Yeah. But I really think they should have gave this to Spielberg. Because first of all, The Fablemans is amazing. I haven't seen The Fablemans, so I can't. It's great. But um, he directs a movie like about his life which he's apparently hasn't really opened up about a lot. Yeah. And like, it is a great movie and it's this whole story about like, like how it's, it's, you know, it's the classic like love letter to cinema thing. Yeah. And you don't give him best director. I don't know. I mean, I guess I, that is political kind of, if they would have gave it to him, but I don't, I, I don't see how the Daniels style of direction. I don't know if that was necessarily the best part. Of everything everywhere, but you know it could have went to worse people. Did the they Daniels. write it? So. Yeah, I think the writing was phenomenal. But do they, they, they like? Do they know what their next project is? I don't know. I know they're doing that Star Wars show or yeah. something, right? Which is kind of cool. But yeah, and then just these last three: uh, best actors, Brendan Fraser. That one was also it wasn't a lock, but I feel like that was the safe choice. I was happy, yeah. I was happy too, and he deserved it. I thought he was great yeah, in the oil. Yeah. Not that Austin Butler or uh, no. Colin Farrell didn't, you know. But Michelle Yeoh wins Best Actress. No complaints, you know. Yeah. It was either her or Kate Blanchett, and I didn't like Tar, so I'm glad that Michelle Yeoh won. And she was act- she's actually the f- the second non-white actress to ever win the award. Which really? Kind of insane. Yeah. No. The only other person who's won it was Halle, Halle Berry. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not, I forget which role it was. But it was kind of cool because she's the one who like handed the Oscar to Michelle Yeoh. That's awesome. But yeah, it is pretty wild. Only two non-whiteies ever won this shit. Yeah. I wonder why. I mean, the, the Academy is filled with old white men. Yeah, so. yeah. ghouls, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fallout ghouls. Yeah. And then lastly, the best picture was everything everywhere all at once. And even a few months ago, I didn't think this was possible. I didn't think that this movie was going to have so much awards love just because of like how out there it is, you yeah. know? Like, there's literally a scenes in the movie where like this guy's fucking fighting with dildos and shit. Yeah. Like, Usually the Academy doesn't like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that it did so well. Also, the the uh, actual show, like the Oscar show, was pretty cool. I thought uh, Jimmy was a pretty decent host. I don't know if you actually watched it. No, I was working that night. But Yeah, like I enjoyed the show, honestly. There were some good, like, some, some good jokes and... A lot of the presenters were cool. They like purposely yeah. like paired people up, to, like present. Yeah. The Rock was there, which is awesome. Yeah. Also, Andrew Garfield was and uh, Florence Pugh went up together to to uh, give someone an award, and they're actually making a rom com with them. Really? Yeah, I don't know if you knew that, but. And I I love my I love me a good rom com. I can't lie, and those are two of my favorite actors. So. Coming out this year, like. Really. I don't know. I think I would say probably next year. Oh. But yeah, I guess they must have like known that news was going to come out, which is why they put them together. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. But, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say like overall the Oscars, like were you upset by any of the choices or? I mean, no. I mean, obviously I was a little upset with the Puss in Boots, but as like a personal, I feel like everyone else, it's just only me really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Another Oscars in the book. No slapping this time. Although they did mention the slap like five times. Yeah. In the jokes, which got old. But yeah, this was it was a it was a pretty fun award season. I, I enjoyed like 
sort of tracking what was going on and like watching all these movies and stuff. Yeah. So hopefully next year will be good too. We're getting a Scorsese, we're getting a Nolan, Greta Gerwig, which the Academy loves. So Can you imagine if like Barbie wins the best picture? That'd be nice. <laughs> I mean, you never know. Yeah. It would have to be a banger though. Simu Lu would have to like carry that shit. Yeah. Um so yeah, no, let's let's move on to uh some movie news. There's just I feel like there's a decent amount of stuff to talk yeah. about here. Uh first firstly I wanted to discuss how Maxine, the third movie in the uh, X slash Pearl trilogy, starts filming next week. Which is yeah. very exciting. Two of my favorite movies of, of last year, X and Pearl. And can't get enough of Mia Goth. Yeah. Honestly. They they said they they uh, put out some cast members for the movie. I know Kevin Bacon is going to be in it. There was a couple other people which are which yeah. I know Kevin stock. Bacon was the only notable one. Yeah, but I'm excited. He's probably going to be some like executive or something. Yeah, just because she's yeah. like going to Hollywood. Um, but yeah, it's filming next month. Hopefully, we'll get set photos or something to share. Yeah. Um. I also wanted to talk about, speaking of Mia Goth, she was cast in Guillermo del Toro's new Frankenstein movie yeah. that he's making, which the cast seems pretty fire. Oscar Isaac, Andrew Garfield, and Mia Goth. That sounds like a fire movie. Yeah. And Guillermo makes bangers. People forget that he had the Best Picture winner a few years ago. Who, um... Who do you think is playing like the actual monster? Uh, I feel like Oscar Isaac, probably. Who? Wait, who else is in it? Oscar Isaac, Andrew Garfield, and Mia Goth. I feel like they cast somebody else, too, recently. Uh, let me do it. I, I can check, because I know I retweeted the tweet. Let's see. Let's see. I thought it was just those three, though. Um, yep, yep, yep. It says Oscar Isaac, Andrew Garfield, Mia Gother, and early talks to star. I'm sure if I read the article, it'll say maybe, like, who's playing who. But, mm, too lazy right now. Uh, speaking of some more casting, though, uh, I know we mentioned Gladiator 2 a couple episodes ago, and how Paul Mescal was casting that. Speaking of Paul Mescal, just a little side note, he he was nominated for After Sun, which I watched. And I know, Joe, you were telling me like that was like Emily's like favorite movie or something yeah. of the year. He said it was she liked it better than everyone ever, everything yeah. everywhere. I watched it twice and like I just didn't really get it. Like, what is it, it just, about? It's about this girl that's reliving these memories of this vacation she took with her father. And mm-hmm. It's sort of like seeing um, like how shit looks through the perspective of a child. Because like the father's actually like, I don't know if he's addicted to drugs or something. Mm-hmm. I forget what the exact thing is, but he's like not really doing great. But it's like through the eyes of the child. So like oh, there's all these fond memories and shit. Yeah. And it just really just follows them like just at this resort. Nothing like crazy really happens. Like I just like didn't really get the hype for it, but like, now Paul Paul Mescal is getting booked in a bunch of shit now, so yeah. from it, which is uh, which yeah. Anyways, sorry I went on a tangent there, but we mentioned he was cast as the lead in Gladiator Two. So now they just had some more casting news for the movie. The villain is played by one of my favorites, Barry Keegan, aka the Joker. Yeah. Um, and also Denzel Washington is is cast as well. So Ridley Scott's really going all out here. I can imagine Barry as like a villain for this. It's, he's, it's like yeah. getting me hyped. He seems like he would be fire. And you can't go wrong with Denzel, you know. Um, I saw I saw that he originally auditioned for the lead. Who, Denzel? Yeah. No, no, no. Not Denzel. Um, Kyogen. Oh, and then they gave it to Mescal? Yeah. I don't yeah, know, that was probably, like a. I saw like he was one of the actors at like they said auditions. Yeah, they probably like, like, saw that he wanted to be in the movie and found like yeah. another role for him, 
which is pretty cool. So that this casting news is coming out now. I think it should start filming like relatively soon. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how quick it like picked up. Because I feel like Gladiator Two has kind of like been rumored for a long time. And then one day randomly they were just like, "Yeah, we're doing this." And then they had yeah. casting like within a week, which is awesome. And yeah. Ridley Scott's got a couple other things coming out though. He's doing his Napoleon movie with Joaquin, which is should that be pretty cool. I believe so. I think it's like an Apple TV. Yeah, I was gonna say Apple. I saw it's gonna be on Apple TV. But yeah, I'm playing for that. Anything Joaquin. Um, yeah, but to move on from Gladiator 2. Uh, Jordan Peele, his, his next couple movies, I think, got announced. Well, his next directorial, d- directorial feature is not this Christmas, but next Christmas. Um, I personally think the quality of his movies has like progressively got worse starting from Get Out. So we'll see what he does with this, with his fourth film. Do you think there's a chance that it's not horror? Yeah. What what, what can you see him doing though? Like a, I guess more of a thriller maybe or thriller sci-fi. You think you'd because like his roots are in comedy. So maybe mean, yeah, but you could see this comedy is in clearly is in his passion if he's doing this. Yeah. Um, but also that was announced, and there's another movie from his production company that's coming yeah, in out in September too. It's all right. Yeah, which is pretty cool. It's like only two months between yeah. each other. But yeah, we'll see. I feel like at the least, like he'll think of a creative story to put to screen. Yeah, like, give us something yeah. different than what Hollywood spits out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, very very exciting for Jordan Peele. I feel Peele like it, ha- it has there. to be filming soon if it's you know. I mean, it's coming out. I mean, it has to be written at least by now. Yeah, I would think so. Or they're at least in the process of writing it because they wouldn't say shit yet unless they knew they had something. But I'm I'm gonna bet money that I'll probably bet a hundred bucks that it's, it doesn't end up coming out on Christmas. You think it'll get delayed? No, they're gonna move it because. It's also Avatar three also also releases like that Christmas too. Oh yeah, and, no and then Sonic three as well. Yeah, but, but any like Avatar is just like yeah, like the, like there's no shot of even trying to compete with that. You have to move it up or move it back. There's no yeah. way like. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. When or it maybe comes like out. he's just making like a low budget movie that they don't care. Yeah, that could be true, but I doubt it. I feel like because I think uh don't not don't look up nope made decent money, so yeah nope made good money. I I really like nope. I know like you weren't as big of a fan of it as me. Yeah, but the studio sees he has this draw, so they're gonna if they think it can make I mean, money. He, I mean, all of his movies. I mean, his say what you want, but his movies are all like none of them are bad. They're all like, yeah, good. No, none of them are bad. They're all well made, well written. Yeah. Well, well, actually, well written debatable in some cases but i think yeah. but honestly for i think his quality is like pretty decent yeah i agree especially the horror yeah but yeah exciting for peel lovers yeah um and then the this is probably the most shocking news that's come out and this is yeah. marvel being in shambles is that Jonathan Majors, aka Kang, and the future of the MCU was arrested in New York City last night for aggravated assault. Apparently he like beat the fuck out of his girlfriend or something. Yeah. Just fucking terrible. It's, uh, hopefully she's doing her, she's fine, first of all. Yeah. But I know they said that she had like a laceration like behind her ear or something. Really? Like, bruises. Damn. Yeah. Dude, like he he must have like fucked her up, and he's he's like a he's not a small dude. He's huge. Yeah, it's very weird. And then after this news came out, first of all, his team immediately was like, "Yeah, this is not true," and we're gonna like clear up his name. So take it with a grain of salt. But if this does turn out to be true, this is a very fucked up situation, yeah. and you're he's seeing gone. someone. Yeah, he would be he would be done, and rightfully so. 
Yeah. It wouldn't even it'd be. It would probably be the quickest rise and fall in Hollywood I've ever seen. Definitely. I just like. I was going to say, though, after that news came out, there's a bunch of other people coming out saying, oh, this guy, like, he's terrible to work with. Yeah. And all this shit. But also, like, where was this stuff before? You know, it kind of feels like people might be, like, grabbing attention a little bit. Um, but. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, so you're saying, um, we're thinking that, that, if this turns out to be true, like Marvel's definitely recasting. Yeah. And who do you, you're saying you, you uh, thought of someone who might be good as a yeah. replacement? Cause I, I, I mean, they're just going to say like the, the Kang in multiverse war is just going to be like a different variant with a different face. Like it's not yeah. going to be, it's not going to be like that. They don't have to change any like plans or anything like that. They might reshoot some stuff. Yeah. But, um, Go ahead. No, you're supposed to say uh, who you think should be cast as him. Oh, uh, Jonathan Boyega, which I, I I would like to see. I mean, I want to see him in something. He hasn't been in anything in so long. Yeah, he's been in like a few things. I think he was in that movie. Uh, well, no, he was in A Woman King. Yeah. And I think he was in Judas and the Black Messiah, which is pretty good. But yeah, nothing like franchisey at all. Yeah. I think he would be okay. I think Jonathan Majors is fucking perfect for it, so yeah, hopefully so. hopefully for the sake of who he abused and also for the sake of his talent. But that's second. Yeah. Uh hopefully this shit is not true. But we'll see. Usually Marvel has really good track records with like keeping tabs on people like before yeah. they like cast them to make sure they're not gonna give them any issues. So the fact, if this guy really is this insane abuser, the fact that Marvel still went through with casting him is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, speaking of Marvel downfall, though, uh, <laughs> Victoria Alonso, who is the president of VFX and post-production at Marvel, she yeah. got fired. Which is pretty unheard of. For someone of that yeah. position to get fired like that. And apparently she was one of the main reasons why there was all these troubles with like these VFX houses and like these VFX artists getting overworked and shit. So Marvel is taking accountability, you know? They're firing her ass. If they don't think they need her. And I think yeah. we'll we'll see something similar with Jonathan Majors too, if this turns out to be true. I saw something that apparently that woman was like horrible to work with or something like that. Yeah. I mean, you never know. There's always two sides to uh, to every story. But do you think Marvel is done? No. Dude, I don't... Every day, like, some new shit happens and I keep thinking, like, they're not invincible anymore, you know? Pretty weird thought to have. But. Does Jonathan Major's lawyers say they have two written statements from the woman recanting the allegations against Major's? Oh, shit. That's good news. You think it could have just been like... Look, let me see. Like, she got drunk dropped, like, or something. Seven, like 10 minutes ago. Lawyers say evidence exists to prove he's completely innocent. Yeah, we'll see. Mm. And then all the people that came out to shit on him are going to feel pretty stupid after that. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we'll see what ends up happening with the MCU. Hopefully, this shake up and hopefully Kang is chilling, and hopefully, the Victoria Alonso getting fired thing helps the VFX teams a little bit. I know that Kevin Feige is giving them more time now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I'm just seeing this Jonathan Majors headline right now. Let's see. So. He's provably the victim of an altercation with a woman he knows. Oh, he's the victim? Damn, they're switching the story. I don't really see how he could be a victim. I mean, like, I guess you never I mean, know. He could, he could, like, hit the victim. Like, he, she could hit him. And he's, like, still abused. Yeah, that's true. But if she actually had, like, a laceration behind her ear, how the fuck did she get that? Unless he was he could have, like, he could have, like, pushed her off her and he fell, she fell. Yeah. Yeah. 
crazy I mean, stuff. I'm not I'm not trying to defend him or anything. I'm just saying like it's you know. Yeah, it's possible for sure. It's possible. Um but yeah, MC was in shambles, hate to see it. Um pivoting back to DC for a sec. We got our first look at uh Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn for Joker two. Uh what do you think of the look? I I really like it. I th- I think like it um the it transitions like the aesthetic of like the like that like Joker world like per, like it takes like the Harley Quinn outfit and it like puts his aesthetic with it now. Of and yeah, like that it, Joker it, universe. It, well. No, like yeah, that Joker universe. It yeah, fits into yeah. that style. Yeah. And at first I didn't I honestly didn't fuck with it. But the more I started to look at it, the more that I actually like really liked it. Yeah. And I think she looks good. I think this might not be her final look. Probably oh, yeah. not. I, I kind of want them to do like a little more traditional. Like the classic mm-hmm. Harley Quinn, not her in like a, a I don't suit think jacket. They will, though. I don't think they ever will. I guess not to be compared with Margot Robbie, but you know. You never know. Yeah. Um, We actually posted those pictures on our Instagram if you guys want to check that out. But, and I saw yeah. too that... Uh... There was like Harvey Dent signs apparently now that he's gonna be in the movie. Yeah, which doesn't really make sense for like Bruce Wayne's age, but also like who cares? Doesn't really matter. Yeah. Because this world is different anyway. Yeah. Um But yeah, I don't know if there's any other movie news you wanted to discuss. I think that was really it. Um No trailers, surprisingly. No. I mean I saw I could talk about I was able to go to the Regal Mystery Screening. Oh yeah, talk, how was it. that? I got to see the paint. Uh, I honestly thought it sucked. It was it was pretty bad. So it's I, like, didn't you you when you saw when you like you saw it was coming out? Didn't you think it was like a movie about Bob Ross? Yeah. It's it's not about Bob Ross. It's like about like it's a made up guy. It's like this random like his name's like Carl Nargan or something like that. And he's like a guy that paints on like Vermont or something like that. But it's basically just, like, him, and, like, he just, like, fucks all these girls in his office, and it's, like, about, like, I don't know, like, all their relationships. It's pretty stupid. Yeah, I mean, I think it's supposed to, like, be about Bob Ross, though, even though it's not explicitly saying it. That is strange. No, it's, like, it's like no attachment to him. It's just, like, his, his character is supposed to, it just looks like him. That's it. But that's so the it. story. The story yeah. of Bob Ross, like, fucking a bunch of girls in his office isn't actually true no damn um you didn't enjoy it though you're saying right no it was pretty ass. how how was like the mystery screening though i thought it was like, sick i'm going i'm going on monday i actually switched my schedule around like i made a switch with someone to get off on monday and I'm yeah going, I, and... I would i would see the movie this one the next one's rated r yeah which, which could be a few things i think it might be air I hope it's not because Air literally comes out like two days later. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Uh, didn't we look at the runtime that like matched up with something? I forget. Yeah, let me look at it now. Because I bought the ticket already. Can you imagine if it's uh, Evil Dead? I doubt it. I mean, it already screened Evil Dead. Um, or Bo is Afraid. Actually. I don't. I don't know what Bo's afraid. Nah, it's because that movie's three hours. So three hours, damn. Yeah. Yeah, the three-hour movie trend in Hollywood has to fucking disappear. Yeah. It's an hour. It's an hour fifty-one. The movie. That's the wrong time. I forgot. I think I sent you one that was like an hour fifty-two. Remember, it was rated R. It's like Mafia Mama. I hope it's not that. No, something else. Let me check really quick. Because I think it was like pretty cool. The one. The one that uh, I thought it might be. I think it's within our Twitter DMs. Let's see. Sometimes Regal like drops hints about it. Yeah. Um, But yeah. Oh, pretty awesome. She said like Renfield's one people thought. Oh yeah, you know what? It might be that. Think, I don't think it's gonna be that. Renfield at first looked like shit, but the new trailer was actually pretty good. I I liked the. I thought it looked cool. I didn't know it's the guy that did uh the Lego Batman movie. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. 
It was pretty good. Um, but yeah, I feel we're kind of just uh rambling here. Yeah. Let's, let's uh regather our our thoughts. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's uh shift our focus here to unless you have any other news to talk about. I don't think there's anything. Joe. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. What'd you say? I don't know. No, I said I don't think there's any other news, right? No. Unless you want. Uh. But yeah, let's uh let's shift our focus here to the movie that I recommended on the last episode, which probably anyone listening has probably never heard of it. Yeah. Um, it's directed by Peter Jackson from Lord of the Rings fame, and it's called Meet the Feebles. It's basically like looking at the Muppets like show. And, like, what would happen if it was real, kind yeah. of? And, like, what would go on be- behind the scenes? And there's, like, drugs, sex, and, like, gangs, and all this yeah. shit. And this is my second viewing, and I fucking loved it this time. I, like, re- I, the first time I watched it, I thought it was, like, good. But, like, for some reason, like, I just fucking loved it. I don't know how you felt about it. I thought it was good. I didn't, like, love it, love it, but... I, I really enjoyed it. I just felt that it was, like, so smart. And, like, the way that they set up these characters and, like, like the one that is the knife thrower is also, like, addicted to drugs. So he's, yeah. like, shaky all the time. Um, hold on, I had some shit that I wrote about it. But uh, there's, like, there's a couple things that are, like, like, the guy Harry, who's the rabbit, he's, like, yeah. supposed to be, like, a Bugs Bunny type. Um, but yeah, it's just like grotesque, yeah. and like like puppets. <laughs> I actually really did like the creature designs. Like I thought all the puppets looked like really cool. Yeah, and honestly, they didn't have that big of a budget for this movie. I know I was like looking into a, a little bit, like how it was made. Yeah. So like that, and it kind of gives it like this gritty, like aesthetic to it. Yeah. Which I think really works for the movie. Because it varies a lot from like the Muppets, which has like a, a very like glossy, yeah, um, polished look. You have something like this that just like looks just completely raggedy and like fucked up. Yeah, and that works for the movie itself. Um, what was the budget of the movie? I I know it was low, but I'll check really quick. There's not much like no. This movie's fucking hard to find, honestly. I watched it on YouTube. It's free. Yeah. Oh shit. That's fire. So I guess it's not that hard to find. Yeah. Let me see what the budget was. Seven hundred fifty k. Damn. How much did it make? I, I don't know. Cause I don't think it went to the box office. I think it was probably like a home release. It made eighty thousand in New Zealand, apparently. Oh, he's from New Zealand, right? Eh? Yeah, I don't. Th- I think it was more of like a straight to DVD thing. It's really funny to me though. This this guy went on to make Lord of the Rings, and you could kind of like see the flashes of like brilliance within like the yeah. writing. Um, yeah, I liked like all the characters. I thought they were all like good for what they were. Like, I like the rat and how like yeah. When the, at the beginning, the opening of the movie is like they're doing the uh. The Feebles Variety Hour, or whatever, and they're like singing. Yeah. As soon as it as it ends, he's like he like uh, yells he's at the a cigarette. Yeah, he's smoking a cig, and he like yells at the hippo. He's like, "Get off the stage, like you whale or something." And they were just like all singing happy and shit. Um, yeah, a lot of asshole puppets in here. Yeah. Uh, it kind of show is like supposed to show like the fucked up side of uh Hollywood show business a little bit, and like Hollywood. And I thought it was like a very clever way to do it, which is to make, not make fun of like a real production, but make fun of like something like the Muppets. Yeah. Um, there was also like no humans in the film at all. Which is yeah, I was cool. thinking. I was thinking about that. I was trying to remember if there was any humans in it. And which I, I, is, I didn't remember any. The Muppets usually has like humans, yeah. human characters. Um, but yeah, no humans at all. Aside from, like, some of the characters that were, like, huge were people in suits. Like, uh, the whale. Yeah. And the cow lady. Or whatever, the, or whatever she is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned, like, uh, the body horror shit. 
I actually really enjoyed that as well. I know there's a couple yeah. of scenes like there was obviously like the the fly in the toilet that was fucking gnarly. Yeah. But uh like those little like Furby things got crushed by the barrel. Yeah. Like the rat like eat well, like, was eating them or some shit. Or the 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 walrus like ate the fish and threw them up. Yeah. That stuff was really cool. And I liked yeah. how it was all like practical. Yeah. It goes back into like their small budget and what they're able to do with it. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's just talking about like the writing, like the character of like the fly is the media. It's just like you know, it's like a fly on the wall. Yeah. And they they like go in and get these scoops and shit. Like the way that he characterized each puppet was like just genius in my opinion. Yeah. And I just felt like this was a perfect like mockery of something like the Muppets. Yeah. I don't, like for what it was, I don't really see how they could have done something better, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I wanted to talk about uh my favorite scene really quick, which was the Nom flashback scene. Do you remember that part or yeah, no? Yeah. That show is so funny, dude. I was actually crying. I had to like show my friends it after I watched the movie. It's just like so bizarre. Oh, yeah. I was like crying laughing while I was watching it. And like how he's literally just like a puppet. But he's talking about how like he was in Nam and like he lost his brothers and shit. And he was like wishing that like he would have been the one that died and stuff. And then it shows like why he has this this uh addiction to uh to drugs. But yeah. Yeah, I really like that scene. I don't know if did you have anyone that stuck out. I like the scene when um uh what's the rabbit's name? Harry, I think. Harry, like Harry's like on the phone with the doctor and he's like, Oh like uh he finds out that he's not gonna die and like he's all excited to go back in the show and then he walks out the door and then he just gets like lit up by the fucking machine gun. Yeah. I I really enjoyed that ending too. Yeah, I really like the ending. Yeah, where she pulls up. Um, yeah. So yeah, so basically, what happens at the end is uh, that like the star of the Feebles has been like getting abused by her manager, who's also like the head of the Feebles, and yeah, she they're like dating or whatever, but he's like cheating on her with some other puppet. <laughs> but um, she basically gets like fed up, and at the last show, she just shoots up the entire thing. <laughs> Like kills all the puppets, kills mad people in the crowd, and does she end up killing herself at the end or no? No, she gets reformed, right? I don't remember. No, yeah, she doesn't kill herself. But uh, one thing that was funny about that scene was, um, apparently for whatever reason they couldn't get like fake ammunition, so they used actual live rounds to like film really? that shit. Yeah, oh my god, just pretty cool. Like when they were shooting the the puppets, I thought like all those puppet deaths were cool. Like how like yeah, how like they made them explode and shit. And it was like super bloody. That's actually That's... insane that those live rounds. I know. It's mad funny. Yeah. But I feel like shit like that when you're on like a low budget set, like they got they be cutting corners like that a lot. Yeah. So. But yeah, that was a really cool scene. Um. And yeah, my favorite character was the uh, the knife thrower guy, the one that went to Nam. Yeah. How did you have one or no? I liked the uh, the hippo, not the hippo, but the walrus dude. He's oh, like yeah. such a fucking dickhead. Yeah. I forget he likes. I uh, I know he like uh he violates the the cow. Is she even a cow? Was she a hippo? I think it. I think she might be a hippo. No, it's a hippo. It's a hippo. Oh yeah, it's a fucking hippo. I've been saying cow, but um, yeah, he like violates her od times, and he ends up being in part of this uh, like mob, yeah, or something. Um, what does he end up dying? Yeah, she ends up killing him at the end. I also liked what they did with Harry. How he like. He was, he like uh, thought he had an STD. Yeah. Like his whole face got like completely fucked up. But like, he had to be the star anyway. Like there was no way he was gonna sit out. Yeah. 
So he like goes up on stage to do the show anyway. Just fucking yaks everywhere. I thought that was mad funny. Um, overall though, there's not like a like too much of a set like plot. I feel like a lot of the the scenes are kind of just like intercut with any like between each other, and there's not really like a narrative. The narrative yeah. is just getting to like the last show. But a lot of the scenes could have just been like placed in random order of like going yeah. around and like you know checking in on all these. Puppets. I mean, there's like little like plot points you follow, but it's not really like like what, yeah. like um, like with the the. It's not the, a traditional like structure. No, no, like the hippo finding out like about eventually finding out like the the guy cheating on her. Yeah, and like uh, I mean, yeah, honestly, that's really the only thing. Yeah. I, like, forgot how, like, fucked up the movie was, honestly. Like, it really is kind of, like, like bad, you yeah. know? It's, like, pushing that, that R rating a lot. Yeah. Uh, like, as soon as the... Within, like, the first five minutes, you have, like, the rat smoking and, like, like calling the, the hippo, like, a fat bitch. Yeah. yeah. And then the walrus guy is, like, fucking, like, some cat. In his in his office, like within the yeah. next two seconds of that, it's just like very raunchy, yeah. and I enjoyed it. I mean, it, it brought up the question though uh, that I was thinking of was, do you think like doing adult versions of children's IP like could work? Yeah, because I thought it it, it really worked here. Yeah. I mean, you have things like oh, the Winnie Pooh, like, Winnie the Pooh, like Blood and Honey or whatever. That, Those are kind of like low quality, like yeah, because they've tried to make another like bad puppets yeah. movie, which is like I forget what it's called, but it's with Happy Melissa. Ma- yeah, it's with Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. I don't know. I've never seen it, but apparently it's not great. And I feel like they definitely were more. They definitely didn't go in like as far as fucking no, no, as no way. Did, I'm sure. And I think that probably is what held it back. Because yeah. like the whole the absurdity of it is like what makes it good. So you have to like dive into that. I agree. You know? But yeah, I, I fucked with the Feebles. Honestly, I like the music yeah. in the movie too. Thought it was pretty good. But like the funny. I like the intro that they sing is very good. Yeah, the Meet the Feebles song. Yeah. Sure was stuck in my head. Yeah. There's also like that uh that gay like fox that has the song about sodomy. Oh yeah, Do you remember that? That was pretty funny. Um, like no one clapped at like the showing. Oh. Yeah, there's just like so many like little gags that I can't like think of in the moment. Yeah, which is like throughout the whole movie. Like I thought the movie was really funny, and like a lot of it actually like made me laugh out loud, which is not like something I usually do. Yeah. Um. What's it called? Did you? Oh yeah, no, you said your favorite scene, right? Yeah. Um. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I have any more thoughts on the Feebles. Anything well, else? I really. I'm trying to think if I have any more thoughts on the Feebles. I I guess I kind of want to like recommend it to people, but like, it is like a very strange. Yeah, I remember, like, I was trying to convince my friend to watch. And I showed her the trailer, and she's like, "Absolutely not." It's very oh, out there. Yeah. I, what the fuck was the trailer like? It was just it showed like like just like clips of it. Burn. Essentially, was it? Yeah. That's nah, this one's gonna be a hard convince. If you're into like body horror and like gross out humor, you'll fuck with it. Yeah. Um. Which I am. You know. Which is why I recommended it, and I'm I'm glad I rewatched it because I'd been wanting to rewatch it, and I ended up this time giving it a uh, a four and a half star. I give it a nine out of ten. Yeah. I th- I thought that just for what it was, it was perfect. It was smart. It was fucking disgusting. <laughs> it was funny. It was it was feebles, you know. Yeah. Everything you can ask for. But yeah, I don't think you enjoyed it quite as much as I did. 
I just some of the over like the raunchiness of it, I thought was a little too much for me, but I I still liked it for what it was. Yeah, definitely an interesting watch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're probably gonna like on Letterboxd. I'm like no 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 other of the people like that I follow or anything have seen it, and I follow a lot of like uh film accounts and shit. Yeah. Like ours who are How like did you find this movie? Um I always like have had like a uh an interest in like strange, like fucked up movies, which is weird. Yeah. So I think I just like saw it on like a list somewhere of like like it was probably like the like top ten like most disgusting movies or like some shit like that. And it just like seemed really interesting to me. And yeah. plus with the with like um, with the fact that it is Peter Jackson. What does he say? Have they ever asked him about this movie? Like, I don't know. I feel like he might try to like distance himself from it a little bit because it is very strange. Yeah. Did he write it too? Yeah, I believe so. And a lot of the ideas in it are honestly like, like you got to be a fucked up like individual to like think of some of this shit. Yeah. But, but yeah. That was that was a nine out of ten movie for me. I don't know how you felt. I gave it a three and a half out of five. I mean, I still liked it, but you know, it's really, I, I, what like the gross out stuff you think was just no, no. I just felt like some of the like jokes were like a little like too much on the nose. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, the first time I watched it, I think I only gave it like a three. Yeah, but I don't know. Something just I still liked it. Like I did. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, if 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 you're uh if you're into a uh, Muppet like creatures like like fucking and dying and, yeah. and like shitting, then this would be it's a great movie good, for you. Yeah. yeah, can't recommend this one enough. Um, so yeah, that's that's like our movie discussion, I guess, for today. Yeah, um, we got some Q and A shit we could do. Let's that's see what our loyal fans have asked us. Let's see, let's see. Uh, okay. First question. From at our hugs 23. Thoughts on Tarantino's last project, the movie critic. Okay, so what I don't know it? if you, I don't know if you've heard about uh Tarantino's last project. No. Uh he's doing this I, I gotta look it up. It's called the movie critic. And I'm not. Let me see. Hold on. Let's see. Describe the story as being set in late 1970s Los Angeles with a female lead at its center. That's basically all we know. But it it's gonna be like his last movie, apparently, which is why it's such a big deal. And when a lot of times you'll see, like, when you have a director come out and say, "Oh, this is my last movie," you have like a bunch of stars that want to work with said person that haven't like come out of the woodworks to like try to hop on the movie. Yeah. So so like this the cast is probably gonna be actually insane. I don't know when the movie's coming out. Um I don't think Do you it's think it's actually year. gonna uh be his last film? Um uh, I doubt it. Because he's still like pretty young. Not young, but he's like he's not like fucking Scorsese's age. Yeah. Uh, do you like Tarantino though? Honestly, I haven't really watched enough of like I, I don't even know if I watch any of his films. Pulp Fiction. No. That ass. Kill <laughs> Kill Bill. But yeah, I've seen Kill Bill. Yeah, he, he has like a style. I think you would like him. I, I he feels like I should like him, but for some reason I just don't. And I never really. He's like very, like violence heavy, yeah. and. Which works in some cases, but like I, I watched uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Did not like it. It was just what okay. Is that um, it's about like uh, Hollywood and uh, I forget what year it is, but it follows like these this actor and like this stunt guy, and it's, and uh, just like them being in Hollywood. That's the thing. Like nothing really like happens. Somehow it's like at the end connected to like like. The Manson like murders or something. Mm-hmm. And it, it ends with like this fucking like stupid like bloody 
like insane fight for some reason. And like nothing really just happens the whole movie. But with this movie, which apparently is his last, which is to get back to your question, my thoughts are I'll definitely see it, but I do think Tarantino is a bit overrated. I'll say it. I might what do you think his up. best his best movie is? Um, well, I haven't seen Django. That's the one that I haven't seen, and I think that probably will end up being my favorite when it's all said and done. Yeah. But so far, I would say it's probably a tie between Kill Bill and Glorious Bastards. I've seen Glorious Bastards too. Yeah, that one's really good. Um. But yeah, I don't think he has any like five star movies or anything. Hmm. Hopefully the hopefully the movie critic will be fire, but we'll see. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for the question. Um I guess we'll talk about that though once there's like more info on it. Yeah. Um from at Rob Imperato. What is your ranking of the John Wick movies? It's a good question. Um for me, it would probably be four, three one and then two. Yeah. Same thing with me. Four, three, one, two. Yeah. It's just as they went on, they kept upping the Annie. Yeah. Uh, two, I think, left off on like too much of a cliffhanger, and you could tell it was sort of like setting up another movie instead of like yeah. being its own self contained thing. Uh three was amazing, but four was just like fucking unreal. Yeah. Honestly. Even at, at its runtime. Like two and a half hours. But yeah, they're all good. It's like a really solid franchise. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for the question, Rob. And then our last question from at sophia.k.ua. Are streaming services killing the movie theater experience? Which one do you prefer? That's a great question. I would say that I don't think that they are. I think there were some justified fears that something like that could happen. But I feel like people are starting to appreciate the theater experience the theater more, more yeah. especially when you have movies like Top Gun and Avatar coming out. Like, I, I I don't know about everyone else, but I'd much rather like go see that shit on a big screen. You know? Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry, I just fucking sneezed. Um. But yeah, I I. I... I like I I feel like a lot of my friends too recently have been like wanting to go to the movie theater. Yeah, because why not? I mean, the only yeah. the only. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having like a sneezing fit. Uh, excuse me. Uh, what was I saying? The only deterrent is really the price. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> God. Um, it's allergy season, folks. Okay. Um. Yeah, the price point is really an issue. But besides that, I don't see a reason. <laughs> Sorry, I feel another sneeze. I don't see a reason to not go to the theater. Yeah. Um, I think streaming is actually starting to die a little bit. I mean... Which I didn't really think I'd be saying at this point, but... You're starting to sh- see, like, even, like, The Mandalorian. That was, like, one of yeah. the, the biggest shows on streaming. It, like, it's not even doing that well. I feel like I don't even, like... I mean, I'm watching it, but I, I feel like this is the least engaged I've been. Yeah, I think they sort of... A lot of these companies, like, put all their... Uh, sorry. <laughs> I keep sneezing. Yeah. Put all their eggs in one basket, in some cases. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, they... What's it called? Put in like a lot of assets and money towards streaming. Mm-hmm. And like you're starting to see like people are willing to go out. Movies are making a shit ton of money money again. Yeah. You know? So will we ever see the death of the traditional cinema? No. I doubt it. Why? Even if you I don't know. The metaverse <laughs> even if the metaverse like becomes fire. That could somehow replace theaters, but I don't know. I feel like people still love the the idea of just going out to see a flick, you know, getting some popcorn, watching a movie. But yeah, that's a good question, and I think that's a question that we're going to have to revisit like every five or so years and see where our stance is on yeah. that. 
I don't know if you have any more thoughts. I'm sorry, I just kind of like took over for that one. No, you covered it pretty good. You agree with me? Yeah. All right, good. Um, yeah, that's really it. That was the last question. Thank you, Sophie, for the question. That was a good one. Um, I guess you could recommend your movie. Go oh, for it. Originally, I was gonna recommend like a a movie that me and you both have seen before. Okay. Uh, it's not like a good quality movie, so I decided that since we did something a little like not on the good quality side, like some like more like serious. Okay. So this is more more of an like obscure movie. I've never I've not I've looked like I just picked this out of the blue. It's called The Handmaiden. Okay. Uh, it's heard, like a bad. I honestly do it's, it's it's about like um in like like Japan is occupying nineteen thirties Korea and like people that work in the I don't know. But apparently it's like fantastic. It's a four point four out of five on Letterboxd. Damn. Who directs it? Uh Park Chen Wolk. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's well known. I don't think I've seen any of his movies though, so that's that'll be interesting. He's like a what is is this like his like most famous thing or uh I'm like I said I'm not too familiar with him but let's see any cast members that we recognize um yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure if this is his most notable thing oh no oh dude he fucking made old boy how can oh. I forget that I don't know if you've ever seen old boy I've heard of it will be sick um what's that about uh, it's about this dude who he basically gets like locked up and imprisoned for like seven years or something, but like they mm-hmm. don't explain why. Like he doesn't know why, mm-hmm. and eventually he breaks out and like gets revenge on his captors. So, but there's like a fucking insane plot twist at the end, which is like pretty fucked up. But yeah, yeah. All right. Um, that really wraps it up. Uh. Yeah. Sorry if I was a bit uh discombobulated. I'm like getting my ass is getting kicked by allergies right now. Yeah, I was gonna say you sound sick, dude. Yeah, my voice is all uh messed up. But yeah, so sorry if I was not bringing that same cool, epic, awesome energy as always. But I'll bring it back for next episode. Don't worry. Um, yeah, that, that we got. Uh, what yeah, we let's. So we'll watch um, Dungeons the Handmaid. and Dragons. Oh yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. You've seen it already, right? No, no. I was going oh, to. I, a, you, oh. I was going to go to an early screening, but like none of my friends were around, so I wasn't going to go by myself. So I was in the city. Wait, um, is it on Tuesday? Possibly. I'm on off it. if you want to go. Let me see. Wait, let me just quickly double check and see if. Is there anything else that we have to see? Mario. I think the other thing. Also, Air, I think, comes out April 5th. Oh, and Mario. Fuck. Wait, so next episode is Mario? Yeah. Damn. Damn. All right. So we got Dungeons and Dragons, Mario, and The Handmaid. Damn, man. And possibly... Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a crazy-ass fucking combo. Um, they have, yeah, right. in, they have it playing in Staten Island on Wednesday. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, know, you could see that, I guess, Might as well. Unless you want to just wait. But yeah, now let's let's wrap this thing up. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. Thanks for joining us. And make sure to watch those films we suggested, and make sure to give us some follows. And tell us what you think. So, bye-bye, everyone. Peace.